In today's documentary we will talk about, who are the Nephilim and where did they come from? Sensational statement by scientists, aliens are already here, balls that are almost 3 billion years old. Could a highly developed civilization have created them? The theory of time dilation. How does it work? First let's see who the Nephilim are and where they came from. Many people know about Nephilim from the Book of Enoch, as well as from science fiction movies, and the description of these giants, taken from various sources, coincided almost completely. Who was called Nephilim? According to various sources, Nephilim were giants with great power and great appetite. These giant creatures devoured all human resources, and if they were hungry, they could easily attack a person. There are several versions of where these creepy and huge creatures come from. According to legend, the Nephilim were those children who were born from the union of a human woman and a superior being or a fallen angel. The most common version is associated with fallen angels who fell to the ground and began to teach people a variety of trades, such as medicine or metalworking. It is believed that those angels who were cast down to the earth taught people not only crafts but also writing. Men were taught how to process metal and make weapons out of it. And women were taught the art of seduction. The fallen angels, teaching people everything they knew themselves, during their life on earth created alliances with beautiful earthly women. And then from such relationships were born children who grew up in atlases or giants. These huge creatures, who were considered the children of vice, after a while began to fight with humans and with God. According to other legends, the Nephilim were the children of the representatives of the political or religious elite, as well as the spiritual leaders. However, such a version of the appearance of the Nephilim is questionable, because the children even in such unions could not have grown enormously. Because the representatives of the religious and political elites, as well as the spiritual leaders, were also people. Therefore, the most real is the version with the fallen angels. Characteristics of Nephilim These creatures were thirsty for blood and vicious, as well as unusually powerful. Nephilim are thought to have grown enormously. But legends say that some creatures were only slightly taller than ordinary humans. Of course, there were such Nephilimi, who grew up to 10 or 30 meters. But scientists question this version because they think this is completely impossible, given the physics of our planet. Sensational statement from scientists, aliens are already here. Scottish mathematicians believe that robotic spacecraft created by extraterrestrial civilizations are already present in our solar system. Researchers at the University of Edinburgh warn that these devices are so high-tech that they are completely invisible to our eyes. Unfortunately, we do not yet have such advanced technologies to detect them. We only recently launched the Voyager spacecraft, which today has almost reached the edge of the solar system, but older. Technologically advanced civilizations have placed their spacecraft in our system much earlier, which means that these devices could very well hidden here. Mathematicians Duncan Forgan and Arwen Nicholson believe that extraterrestrial vehicles use the gravity of stars to ensure unimaginable speeds exceeding our standards. Scientists have tried to analyze how devices could travel at such a speed and have found that this is very possible. Mathematicians have calculated that it is enough for alien ships to travel at a speed that is only 90% of the speed of light, so that they can explore every corner of our galaxy in a few years. To fly at such speeds, vehicles must use the gravity of the stars. Our Voyager uses a similar technique, but it helps the gravity of the planets in our system. If it used the gravity of larger objects, such as stars, it could reach an even higher speed. It is also quite likely that the vehicles of extraterrestrial civilizations, cleverly hidden from our eyes, can be sent and configured to study the intelligent life of our civilization. In 2011, researchers at the University of Pennsylvania wrote that extraterrestrial artifacts we don't know about most likely already exist in the solar system, but no one really looked for them. When to expect contact with aliens? Scientists have repeatedly predicted that a meeting with aliens is likely to take place in this century. Many physicists are convinced that aliens will certainly make themselves felt in the very near future, 
but this meeting may not be of particular satisfaction to us. It is curious that from time to time, here and there, there are reports of people meeting with aliens, but none of these contacts have been officially confirmed by science. Balls that are almost 3 billion years old. Could a highly developed civilization have created them? I have a lot of questions for historians and scientists about the origin of some artifacts. Who could have created an iron hammer 100 million years ago? How did the ancient megalithic people weigh tens and hundreds of tons, build majestic structures out of them thousands of years ago? Why are there so many facts in favor of the existence of highly developed civilizations, but scientists are somehow trying to ignore this? The whole problem is the confusion of historians and scientists themselves, who can only shrug their shoulders when asked such questions or even begin to invent that most artifacts of antiquity are fakes and pranks, and ancient structures they were built centuries ago. Such a version exists about the Sphinx, for example. How can I accept the fact that there were already civilizations on Earth that could be ahead of modern humans in development and possess technologies that are not available to us now? Maybe even extraterrestrial technologies. Forgive me, but I can admit such a hypothesis. So what did I want to talk about in this documentary? About the mysterious balls that were found in the mines of South Africa and, according to preliminary estimates by the same scientists, the age of the artifacts is about 2.8 billion years. Some readers are now thinking, well, everything is clear, another author who writes all sorts of nonsense about antique artifacts and aliens, nonsense. Other readers will start building versions about the natural origin of mysterious balls and may recognize a similar version. But I am more inclined to the version that truly highly developed beings could create them. And do you know what is even more interesting? The balls were studied at the American Space Institute and experts concluded that even modern technologies are not capable of doing such a thing, not even close. Similar balls have been found elsewhere on the planet, but with different ages of 2 million years. So who created them? Unfortunately, no one has an answer to this question. The theory of time dilation. How does it work? There is such an interesting hypothesis that if you look at the Earth from a distant point in our universe through a telescope, you can see living dinosaurs. It is understandable. The speed of light is a finite quantity. It takes some time for the photons to reach the viewer. Therefore, if you have to fly very far, it will take longer. In general, it is clear that from a physical point of view, this assumption is not entirely correct. After all, you just have to have a giant optical lens or a black hole between the observer and the dinosaurs. It is important here to evaluate the word giant correctly. The lens should have a size of 4 to 5 light years, which is technically unattainable, if only because of the impossibility of choosing a suitable material that does not break under its own weight. But this example interests us now for another reason. There is an interesting paradox. The farther away an object is from us in space, the faster it moves away from us. Due to the fact that the universe under the influence of gravity should eventually slow down its expansion, the rays of light there should also slow down. This means that a distant object will not be able to move faster in any way, but will only be able to move more slowly. But the practice of measurements shows the opposite. In this scenario, the universe, on the other hand, is accelerating its expansion closer to the periphery. We gave an example with dinosaurs at the beginning to remind you that the speed of light is still a limited value, and looking into the distance, if we have the technical ability, we will really see the past. Such reasoning leads to the fact that it is not the universe that is accelerating its expansion, but we are looking at dinosaurs in the past and at the same time we see a higher rate of expansion of the universe than is now observed. In fact, we are looking through a telescope at a time when the speed of the universe was faster than it is now. Because of this, when we look at an object in a faster universe, which is actually a projection of the past with a higher rate of expansion, we see that the object is supposed to move faster. Because of this, when we look at an object in a faster universe, which is actually a projection of the past with a higher rate of expansion, we see that the object is supposed to move faster. In fact, it is an object that moves at its own speed during its time. 
If you explain the effect quite intelligibly and without problems, then it's like looking at a car moving at a variable speed through a telescope. At a distance of one kilometer from us, it was going at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour. And next to us it was going at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. But this example does not take into account the characteristics of the space-time continuum. After all, the speed of the car is determined by the system. And it would be fair to say that both there and there the car was traveling at 50 kilometers per hour, but when they are superimposed on each other, it results in two frames of reference that do not match. Depending on the rate of expansion of the universe, the speed will seem different to the observer. As a result, in one of the reference systems, a speed of 50 km per hour will be seen from a distance as a speed of 70 km per hour. Do you think that the Nephilim are involved in these incredible theories? I am waiting for your comments to discuss the subject together. Until next time, I wish you a wonderful day.